Uh, on behalf of uh, the whole team, uh, Professor Helen Dewey, uh, Patrick Carney, Catherine Bazart, uh, Professor Butz Cuban, Ellen Young, um, Denise Driscoll, and Professor Danny Eckert, uh, I would like to thank uh, the Brain Foundation and other donors uh, for this prestigious um, and competitive gift uh, that we were awarded. Um, so just to give a bit of background, I am a neurologist from Brazil. Um, I came to Australia initially in 2014 for my PhD at UNSW Neuro, uh, where uh, my uh, PhD was on neurosleep. And the uh, idea for this project uh, was a continuation uh, of my PhD. And uh, the, the reason for this research is because um, MS patients are often uh, uh, presenting with fatigue, which is a very uh, common and debilitating uh, feature uh, that happens in uh, all uh, multiple sclerosis patients. <coughs> so uh, obstructive sleep apnea happens in about 20% of all MS patients uh, prior to diagnosis. And during disease course, it can uh, build up to up to 90%. And traditionally, MS patients do not have uh, the traditional risk factors for obstructive sleep apnea, such as uh, overweight, middle-aged male. So, which implies that uh, perhaps the neuroinflammation that happens in those patients may play a role uh, in upper airway collapsibility during sleep. So, uh, to assess uh, those patients, I'll be using two simple tools. One is the stop bank questionnaire, which is a validated uh, questionnaire uh, to measure the risk of uh, obstructive sleep apnea uh, in general population. Uh, in MS patients, it has shown that uh, the questionnaire itself can only identify about 56% of those patients. Um, and I'll be also using another simple tool, which is the upper airway sensation testing with monofilaments that can identify up to 50% to of patients with high risk of airway uh, collapsibility during sleep. So during the study, I'll be looking at a cohort. This is a pilot study of 30 patients uh, that we divided or be categorized based on this top bank questionnaire on low versus high risk of obstructive sleep apnea. Um, they'll be assessed with the questionnaires as well, and all of them would be follow up uh, with the gold standard uh, sleep diagnosis or uh, polysonography. So at the end of it all, I'll be comparing the results, um, and we uh, hypothesize that the combination of those two simple tools uh, will increase the prediction of uh, obstructive sleep apnea in this uh, cohort of patients. And uh, the ultimate goal of this study, obviously, is a long-term research that uh, is building data for uh, more uh, research. But we'll be aiming uh, in the future to look at larger cohorts. And uh, the goal of this study is uh, we hope that uh, improving the diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea, we can better manage uh, fatigue in those patients. Uh, and also, in the light of the recent changes in Medicare billing for the sleep studies, uh, we also hope that combining those two tools, we can be simply or easily used in the clinical practice. We can identify those patients and uh, reduce the burden uh, to public health costs. So I would like to thank all the donors, uh, all the uh, uh, guests present here, and uh, the organizing committee for this uh, 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 gift. Thank you.